Uh, I'll call the fifth regular council meeting of the Common Council to order. City Clerk Sue Richards, may you please call the roll. Salman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 16 present. Quorum's present. Approval of the minutes. Alderman McGrath? Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we um, dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting and the same stand approved is entered on the record. Motion second. Second. Motion second. Under discussion? Not all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next we have the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd ask Alderman Davis to please uh, lead us. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Davis. Resignations, uh, Attorney McLean. A letter to the mayor from uh, all the person Davis. I'm sorry. Please accept my resignation as a member of the Commission on Aging. The Commission meets during the day at 8.30. I'm unable to attend at this time of day uh, as I work day shift and unable to get off. I thank you for the appointment, but it personally is not working out for me. Thank you, uh, signed Alderman Davis. That can be accepted and filed. There's a motion, second. There's a motion and second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, mayor's appointment. Uh, stated today's date. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Alderman uh, Vicki Meyer to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Alderman Gene Davis, whose term expires 4 17 06. Signed by the mayor. They will lie over. Next, we have presentation by Susan Hart. Mayoral Administrative Officer regarding an update for the 4th of July celebration. Ms. Hart, would you please step forward? Good evening. Um, the mayor requested that I update you on the status of the 4th of July activities. This year's festivities are going to look different from previous years, and I want to explain why in case any of your constituents contact you. Um, as you're aware, several files and disks were discovered to be missing from my office upon the start of my position. After the Sheboygan Press ran the story asking folks to contact me regarding the parade participants, Mr. Hutz, who had held my position until last December, came in to help pull the missing pieces together, spent an afternoon with me. Um, he explained to me the tradition of the funding, which was a good thing because I wasn't sure how it was working, and um, just went through basic Fourth of July um, items that we didn't have any records for. As a result of the Sheboygan Press story, the public has been very responsive and we have a real good idea of the parade participants. However, we are over budget for the festivities and citizens may be disappointed when they learn their favorite group will not be participating in the parade due to budget constraints. As a result, the mayor has willingly given up his traditional brat fry to free up that budgeted amount. Um, we have a lot of work yet to do. The group from Bethany Reformed Church who always operated the food stands at the lakefront have been told that they are not able to operate it this year due to security reasons. So right now we only have three food vendors. Um, kettle corn, the Jamaican jerk chicken, and the big taste grill brats. I, we need ice cream down there, we need soda, we need chips, we need snacks. I've put a call out to a couple of different groups. I'm waiting to hear back from them. Um, but we have a, a lot more work to do along the lakefront as far as food vendors go. Um, I'm going to pass out a budget. And uh, Nancy Buss from Finance put this together. Mr. Graff. And while it's being passed out, I'll explain what Mr. Hutz explained to me. The funds that are raised that were raised last year. So the amount that Johnsonville gave last year to pay for the fireworks, 
the amounts from uh, local business are always put into the account to budget for next year. So we are using the budget that you all put together um, at the end of 04. Those were funds that you knew you had to go into 05, all right? So if you see the budget, basically what it says in the first column is the approved budget that you all approved for celebration activities for the fourth. And you approved $12,000. We have a balance of $1,605. The um, fireworks, we had a, a carryover from last year of $50,582. The contract for the fireworks that you all will approve tonight, hopefully, is for $50,000. That was the agreed upon amount before I came in my position. So we have, if you take that 1605 and the 582, slightly more than $2,000 to spend yet. However, uh, Ralph Moffengelly has not had a purchase order put through, but there has been a commitment to his group of $2,500. Right there, we're nearly 400 under budget or over budget. Additionally, um, an arrangement had made, made with the Sheboygan Press for advertising and to pass out, um, have circulars inserted into the paper. And so that's about another $1,200. Um, what was new this year is that um, we wanted to incorporate Safe Harbor, or I'm sorry, um, the South Pier into our festivities. And so we have spent more than $4,000 on the activities over at South Pier. Those are the, that's really what just kind of um, added up so quickly. Um, as I said, the mayor has given up his brat fry to help us defray the, the budget overage that we are in right now. Now, next year's budget, if we take, if you look at the 2005 contributions and you take the 7850, and Johnsonville has made a commitment of 39,000. So we have approximately a little less than 47,000 to carry into next year. And if we continue on the past uh, contracts that we've had with Bartolotta, the minimum we've ever um, spent has been 50,000. So next year, or as soon as this fourth is up, I'll have a lot of uh, work to do to bring in some more donations for next year. Um, I'd be willing to answer any questions or concerns you might have. The Alderman. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. So uh, with that shortfall, uh, what a, what's going to happen with uh, Classic Reunion? Because they're the biggest group that's ever been in the parades in Sheboygan and got the biggest followers because I've been getting calls most of the afternoon saying that if Classic Reunion's not in, they're not even going to bring their kids. Well, it depends. If you want me to go over budget, I'll, I'll bring them in. I mean, that's the long and the short of it. So it will have to be your call. What, is, what was their $1,000. We also had a group um, called the Blue Star Marching Band out of Madison that had called and said, oh, we're coming, and there had been no purchase order put through for them. So we've told them no also. We've also canceled a group. Any other questions? Alderman Serda. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm just wondering because you had mentioned, Ms. Hart, that you might have better chance next year to plan ahead and maybe get more donations. And if it's just $1,000 and it might just be a real critical um, component to our parade, it might be mm -hmm. worth sacrificing that $1,000. Thank you. I'm not, I apologize, I'm not certain the procedure when you do go over budget for something, so I'm going to put that right back in council's laps, you know, because my hands are tied with what money we do have and what purchase orders have already been put through. Alderman Susha. Thank you. Just to clarify, is my understanding that we are already $1,600 in the hole? Mm -hmm. And then if we got this extra band, that would put us $2,600 over budget? Thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just my opinion that the taxpayers don't want to spend that money for a parade. Thank you. Alderman Stefan. Uh, 
Yes, in your comments you made, <laughs> you mentioned uh, something about the $1,200 for the Sheboygan Press. Is that so that we can switch and change and spend that on the band, or is that already, the checks already written and everything, or? The issue is um, when Mr. Bonet was soliciting donations, he had put on the contributors' amounts, um, if you contributed this amount, we would include you in this, the advertising, the flyers. It's that word flyers that is catching us. And so he had already made arrangements with the Sheboygan Press to put these flyers in the paper that's going to have the advertise, um, you know, the sponsors' names on it. So I'm kind of stuck with that. Oliver and Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you had mentioned the money for carryover for the next year. Mm -hmm. Is there any, because I know um, we had said the number 2,600 that we're under, could we utilize that money from the carryover previous year and not necessarily be under? The carryover from the previous year is that 50,582, you see where it says prior year carryover right in the middle of the page. We've already run a purchase order for 50,000 for Bar Bartolotta fireworks. So when I'm talking about the shortage, I'm already taking that, the excess of $582 and the $1,605 and adding those together. And right there with paying Ralph Moffangeli's group, we're 400 right there in the hole. Then we look at the advertising and the cost for the circulars. Um, and I'm sure there's gonna be something in here that I'm not aware of. So, um, you know, if, again, I'm just going to lay it in your laps. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Hart reports as part of your office, is that correct? Yes. Um, and in that case, if, if something has gone over budget or if it goes over budget, what happens, you need to request um, um, an exemption, or not an exemption, but you need to request uh, a variance on your, your budget from, um, from the Finance Committee mm -hmm. and then request that it either comes from some other budgeted item in your, in your department or from the contingency fund which we do have available. So uh, the proper thing would be if you're going to go over and you know kind of how much you're going to go mm -hmm. over to um, make a request to the Finance Committee to, um, to go over budget. Well until um, the group had called today, the Classic Reunion we were right on target with the mayor's uh, donation of his brought fi fry money. So um, if that's what you want me to do for this classic reunion, that's what we'll do. Well, I know the 4th of July parade is one of the biggest draws mm -hmm. of the entire summer, and um, a lot of people enjoy it, and a lot of people make um, <coughs> family outings and family reunions themselves for that, that particular um, event. And um, it would be a shame if, um, for a thousand dollars or even fifteen hundred that we wouldn't be able to give them what they're looking for. Thank you, Alderman McGraw. Any other questions? Alderman Eberg. Thank you, Your Honor. A couple of thoughts. Uh, first off, I think it's wise to have our finance committee take a look at, at this matter. But also, uh, now we have reached the threshold of informing the public that we have a shortage, and I think we've always had good corporate citizens in Sheboygan, so I think it, certainly for uh, those businesses or those individuals that feel the classic reunion is an important uh, get-together point or an important part of our parade, hopefully we'll be able to generate some interest and hopefully a donation or two along the line to uh, allow that uh, group to come forward and continue to march. Excellent idea. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just think I would like to bring it to the attention of the people of Sheboygan that Classic Reunion Band is all the people from the city of Sheboygan, all the, the men and the women who were in drum and bugle corps years ago that made up a big part of the city of Sheboygan. So they're past and present people that have lived in Sheboygan. I think it's very necessary to have them back with us. Thank you. Thank you. As a comment on my part, if the I, I sense the council would like to have that classic band play, I will meet with Ms. Hart in the morning. Mind you, I don't like to spend money we don't have. I don't like to budget money we don't have. I don't like to play around with money I don't have. But if the council wishes, we will submit a document to Finance Committee. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Hart.
Next we have presentation by Mr. Danny Moyer of the Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Moyer. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Is there any objection, being that uh, Ms. Olson is not on the agenda, Mr. Moyer is? Any objection? No. None. Please continue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the council. First of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity just to have the chamber come before you and give you an update on the tourism activities. The chamber. Before I do that, there's two things I'd like to bring up. Brat Day in Madison is coming up on June 22nd, and I would like to personally extend an invitation to all of the council members to attend Brat Day in Madison. It's a great opportunity to put Sheboygan on the map with the legislators, the state agency, and the governor's office. It's very well received down there, and uh, I hope that you are able to join us. Second of all, given the conversation we just had on the 4th of July parade, um, I would be happy to see if we can garner sponsorship for Classic Reunion, um, either via the chamber or via a few of our chamber members. If you'd give me a day or two to work on that, I'd be happy to see if we can accommodate that and make sure that they are sponsored. Uh, after that, I'd like to just mention that tourism is an, an exciting thing to talk about and a real positive success for uh, the community in the area. Tourism is on the threshold of building a new dream. And I brought for you tonight a document. It's called Vital to Sheboygan's Future, the Chamber Tourism Center. And it talks a little bit about what our vision is to build a dream for the community that will bear a greater benefit than we can realize at this time, that will help aid the economy for the community and the area. And I point that there is no risk to the city of Sheboygan with us moving ahead with this, as no room tax dollars will be used to build a visitor center. And in the document, which I will not go into, I'm sure you are all capable of taking a look at that on your own, but it does share the vision. And I ask that every alderman look at the document and dream with us as we try to uh, talk about an evolving dream that we have been working on for a few years at this point. Um, I think Sheboygan is on the crossroads of, of moving us forward even further in the tourism end, and it talks about why we believe a visitor center is important to where we're going. The chamber is dedicated to, uh, itself uh, to immerse the organization in this project to reach a successful end. Um, but we will need a partnership from the business community to help us in a capital fundraising campaign with that, and support from the city council will be needed to make this project happen. And because tourism is, tourism is so successful, Denny prepared for you a great document that details the activities of the last year, and I'll give it back to him so that he can report out to you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moyer? Thank you, Dee. Dee gives you all that exciting news about the visitor center, and I gotta give you all these boring numbers. That's like trying to follow Frank Sinatra or something, but I'll do my best. I want you to know also that uh, <clears throat> your city baseball team will win a game this year, just so you know that. Just because we're old for June, don't get discouraged. We'll be all right. Good evening. It is a pleasure to be here, and uh, I think this is like the 11th year that I've given my annual report to the, to the council. And um, most years were scheduled earlier, but you had some pretty hectic times here earlier in the last couple of months, so we asked to, to be on later. And so tonight we're bringing you good tidings. As you are well aware, there have been spectacular advances in our recreational and, and cultural opportunities in recent years. These have added immensely to the quality of life for our friends and families. We're talking here about world-class golf, world-class auto racing, world-class waterfront activities. We're talking here about exceptional visual and performing arts opportunities. We're talking about outstanding environmental parks. We're talking about a tremendous new hotel and water park. These amenities have made the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County a marvelous place to live. But you know something else? 
they have contributed immensely to our economic growth as well. That part is called tourism. So there's just a couple of notes about this thing called tourism that I'd like to share with you. In 2004, visitors spent $271,432,000 in Sheboygan County. That's an increase of 2.44 percent. In 2004, tourism provided 7,165 full-time jobs. In 2004, tourism provided $168,132,000 in resident income. Sheboygan County tourism generated $34.7 million in state revenue and $11.7 million in local revenue last year. Now, if you'll permit me, I'd like to put that in a, in a form that should be important to you as older people and to everybody who's in the room tonight. Were it not for the money that tourism generates in taxes and fees, each Wisconsin resident would face an average of nearly $900 in additional taxes annually to maintain existing government services. Keep in mind, too, that all of these numbers were generated uh, in a year in which national tourism continued to be in a recovery mode because of terrorism and, and economic concerns, and in a year when three of Wisconsin's top 10 tourism destinations fell off, had decreases in their revenues. Um, the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce and its Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, is recognized by the state of Wisconsin and by the the uh, Wisconsin Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus and International Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus as the City County Destination Marketing Organization. And as such, we spend a great deal of time and energy promoting tourism. We promote leisure travel and we promote group, group travel and group is both meetings and conventions and motor coach. We promote tourism through print and economic media through trade shows and through public relations. Just today I toured the area with four travel writers and they love us and the weather was marvelous, which always helps. Um, now obviously we cannot take credit for all 271 million that was brought into Sheboygan County. You need to know that uh, Blue Harbor and Road America and the American Club and Ostoff and the Elkhart Lake and Plymouth Chambers all invest heavily into promoting tourism. But together and with our tourism partners we have uh, dedicated ourselves to this aspect of economic growth and development. We work in partnership, particularly with Elkhart Lake Tourism, with the Lake to Lake Motor Coach Group, which includes Horicon Marsh and uh, Fond du Lac and Manitowoc and Oshkosh, uh, and with the Wisconsin Harbor Towns Association. We work with others also, but I mention these three because as a result of our partnership, we have been granted $136,700 in state and coastal management grants uh, for tourism. There's a lot of numbers in the packet that we distributed, and I just want to highlight them. I'm certainly not going to do a line by line on all of that. But as you look through your report later, you will find our financial report in there. That indicates that 72% of our total revenues were spent for marketing and only 28% on operating expense. Uh, and if you look at that report, you will see that we placed more than 150 ads in 60 different publications. We ran 22 television spots, we dropped 25,000 emails, and we appeared at 11 different trade shows. We try very hard to track the results of our promotion. Tracking is, is a difficult thing to, to, to get your arms around and really confirm. Um, but it's important to us. And uh, I'd like to share some of the numbers that, that have come about as a result of our tracking. As I said earlier, our goal is to create economic impact. That is, quite frankly, to get people to come to Sheboygan County and leave their money here. That's what it's all about. But to do that, you initially have to acquaint people with Sheboygan County. Uh, and that's called creating awareness. If someone calls and asks us to send them a visitor's guide as a result of seeing one of our ads, um, we, we feel we have successfully created awareness in that person and we call that a visitor inquiry because they inquired about something. We keep track of all of our visitor inquiries. Last year the Chamber brought online a new improved and more accessible website which along with our 800 number was the main feature in all of our advertising. Our ads wanted people to go to that website and the 800 number. 
Uh, and then if they needed more information, they, we'd give it to them as a result of their call. The results from the web advertising has been tremendous. Web visits jumped 164% last year. They went from 69,000 in 2003 to 183,000 in 2004. Our 800 number calls went up 7.8% from 2,800, from 2,899 to 3,126. Uh, since we anticipated a decline in the 800 calls because of the web, we were extremely happy that that went up, even though it was marginal, because we thought most people would be doing the web thing, but we got a lot of 800 calls in, in spite of that. There is a flip side, though. As a result of the emphasis on the web, the actual reader response card number was down slightly, and so are the uh, office calls and some of those things. But we added a trade show, so our trade show uh, contacts number was up from, from 7,277, excuse me, 7,277 to 8,885, a jump of 20%. So all in all, uh, I report to you that Wisconsin's ninth-ranked county in terms of expenditures by tourists gained 103.1% in total inquiries last year, going from 107,700 in 2003 to 218,800 last year. And as I mentioned earlier, we gained 2.44% in total expenditures last year, going from 264.98 million in 2003 to 271.43 million last year. So those are a lot of statistics, but there's one more that I think might be the most important, uh, and that is this. There are 30 Wisconsin counties who generated more than $100 million in tourist expenditures last year. I would call those 30 counties the major players in Wisconsin tourism. Of those 30, since 1993 when Davidson Peterson began tracking tourism expenditures in the state, um, only two counties, Sauk County, which as you know is Wisconsin Dells, and Walworth, which is Lake Geneva, have shown greater growth than Sheboygan County. That means that as a tourism destination, we are growing faster than Milwaukee County, faster than Dane County, faster than Brown County, uh, Door County, Outagamie, all of them, except for Wisconsin Dells and Lake Geneva. Sheboygan County tourism has increased 154.29% since 1993. We are the third fastest growing destination in the state. I need to stress to you our community leaders here and to everyone listening that virtually everyone in Sheboygan County is affected by tourism, not just innkeepers and restaurant people, everyone. Because when visitors are in town, they are just like residents. Just like a resident, they run out of shaving cream and they need to make a run to Walgreens. Just like a resident, they can be hurt, suffer an injury or toothache or something and they see one of our physicians or dentists. Just like a resident, they can forget to pack a white shirt or a tie and they gotta run to Yonkers or Coles. Uh, they may have a free night, so they like to see a concert or a, or a show or a movie. They need gas, they need groceries, they need prescriptions filled, and they need entertainment. The difference between them and residents is that they are adding to our economy by buying goods and services with money they bring into Sheboygan. They are not just recycling money that they earned here as residents. That's new money, that is economic growth. So I need to stress to you one more time that no matter what you do for a living, if you don't think you're involved in tourism, you really are. Uh, before I close, I'd like to make a comment on a statement that was made on this floor a couple of weeks ago. Tourism is only one side of the Chamber's economic development mission. The Chamber works very hard to show the country, the entire world, uh, what a quality of life that we have in this area so that we can generate relocations of, of families and of businesses and expansions of businesses. It was stated here that room tax generated in the first quarter of this year was down from last year. The stated inference being that we were not doing a very good job. I'd like the council to be aware of this. In 2002, the CVB share of room tax receipts in the first quarter were $7,500. In 2003, they were $9,600. This year, 2005, 
They were $17,400, a substantial increase over that precedented norm, 55%. Now, why did I not mention 2004? 2004 was not a normal year. Um, yes, room tax in this quarter was down from room tax in the first quarter of 2004. Why? Because in 2004, carpenters and masons and plumbers and electricians were in our town staying at our hotels from Monday through Friday. They were here building Blue Harbor, they were here adding to the Acuity building, and they were here building the Sheboygan Falls Electrical Transmission Building. I just thought you should know that first quarter receipts, yes, they were down this year, but they were way up last year, 400%. So that might shed some light on the job that we are doing here. So thank you for your attention and, and thank you for your long-standing relationship uh, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce and the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, I, I hope it'll continue for a long time so that we can continue to make the, the enviable progress we have and continue to grow our, our city's economy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moyer. Excuse me, Mr. Moyer. A question for you. Sure. Susha. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think that in the past there were some things that have been done that didn't include enough input from a lot of people in the tourism community. And I think that moving ahead and working together is extremely important and uh, bringing more things above the table and having a lot of truth and honesty and some good dialogue is going to be essential to be successful or to maximize our tourism potential. And um, one of the things this council has to do by the end of June is to decide um, what's going to happen in the future with the, the chamber's contract. And I think a piece of information that will be crucial to helping us make the decision is the exact location of where this future visitor center is going to be. Um, it's been mentioned it's going to be near the intersection of Taylor Drive and Highway 28. And I was hoping that you could give us a more specific location. We can do that probably within two weeks, I would say. We're, we're in the process, D, help me out. We're in the process of closing the deal and I just, I'm not comfortable giving you that information just now. We are not really comfortable to disclose that until we have in fact closed the deal because we think that it could encumber someone else and, and we could, you know, perhaps forfeit that property. So until we've closed on the property, um, we're not comfortable releasing that quite yet. However, um, we are extremely close and uh, should be doing that yet in June. Alderman Rector. And if you would like, we'd be happy to announce that. Well, we intend to have a press conference the day that we, that we uh, close on the property. Alderman Rector. Thank you, Your Honor. It says here that we gained 103.1 percent of total inquiries last year. Was a great deal of that due to the PGA, or do you see the, the trend continuing again this year, even though we don't have the PGA <coughs> championship happening here this year? I think the trend will continue. A lot of it is a result of the PGA, but most of it is a result of our website, and probably the combination of the two. But we, I don't foresee any letdown. Golf is going to be here now. That exposure last year has got people coming, whether there's a PGA or not. Alderman Stephan. Uh, yes. On the last page where you did your balance sheet and your income statement, I just, I understand that we don't have the, you know, all the terminology down, but could you explain the last item under general marketing where it says the room tax carry forward of 57000 and what would that encompass? That's $57,000 that we are carrying into this year. Why are we carrying money over? Uh, is really your question, Bill. And, and the answer to that is early in the year is when we have to do our heaviest advertising. In, in March, April, and May is when we do most of our promotion for summer and fall. Uh, this has not been a great destination in January and February, so we're trying to get more people here in the, in the fall. Uh, and and that, it's very expensive. Our income at that time of the year is low because of not so many people here. Our room tax is down the first quarter. So essentially, I'm borrowing, if you will, money from the Chamber's general fund to pay my bills in January and February. Okay? Our money starts coming back uh, at the end. So in the end, usually our budgets balance out. But that $57,000 is money that will be spent this first quarter this year and second quarter this year. We're kind of, we're kind of a quarter behind all the time, really is what it is. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Moyer. Any other questions? I'm happy to answer. 
Thank you. Um, excuse me. I think there is one. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's not so much of a question, but I would like to just make a statement that I would like to commend, if I may look at them, um, directed to Dennis Moyer and Dee Olson and, a, and the rest of the chamber members of what a fine job you have done to promote the city of Sheboygan and to make it the best place and to let that out to the public. And I thank you for that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sagali. Next, we have public forum. Uh, who? Um, first on the list is Susan Hundley. Susan, can you give me your home address, please? 632 Michigan Avenue, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Perez and Council, for allowing me the opportunity to speak before you tonight. I would like to make a few comments regarding my settlement request that was before the Committee of the Whole on May 19th. When I submitted the settlement offer, I contacted all of the altar persons to share information, answer questions, and take advice. That was all I wanted to do, not solicit support for the settlement. Four of you did meet with me while scheduling conflicts existed for some and others declined my offer. One of you stated the reason you would not meet with me was the city attorney said while it was not illegal to meet, he would advise against it. This surprised me. I, I had to wonder why the city attorney would advise against any of you meeting with me, even though it was perfectly legal, unless he thought I might share information he did not want you to hear. I can respect those of you on this council who have a thorough understanding of the room tax litigation and do not agree with me. What I cannot respect is to be treated unjustly because of personal bias. The oath that you take as an altar person should not be selective nor subject to your personal bias. I was disappointed to hear Alderman Dan Berg express his very negative opinion about the settlement offer on WHBL radio before the Committee of the Whole even met. I also listened as he stated he would vote against closed session because everything should be out in the open for everyone to hear. Now, I do agree that open government is good. However, however even City Attorney McLean had explained to the Council that this settlement offer met the criteria for a closed session. In fact, it is the norm. While Alterman Serta explained the hours of work she had done prior to the Committee of the Whole meeting, meeting with City Attorney McLean, D. Olson, even calling the State Ethics Board to see whether Alter Person Susha would need to speak in open session, she did not want to meet with me or receive any information I, I offered to send her. I feel Alter per Person Serta in her hours of work was doing everything she could to reinforce her own personal bias. If she would have agreed, I would have been able to share with her over six years of work I have regarding room tax. My experience with those of you who did we meet with me, however, far outweighed this negativity. I was pleasantly surprised and impressed by Alderman Manny, whom I had never spoken to before. After listening to what I had to say, he said he would work on helping to arrive at a solution agreeable to both the city and myself. His resolution before you tonight is the result of this effort. Alter Person Susha's presentation during the Committee of the Whole was intended to give you crucial information regarding the room tax lawsuit. There is little that I need to elaborate on, but I will offer a few brief comments. The first room tax proposal for Sheboygan in 1983 simply states the intent to increase funding of tourism and visitor promotions. A 4% room tax was imposed and 95% was used for tourism promotion development. A steering committee was appointed with, which consisted of three representatives of the lodging industry, two aldermen, two chamber, two tourism, and three members at large. The proposal elaborates on the numerous benefits to the community by making Sheboygan a known tourist destination through the use of room tax and with the guidance of the steering committee. At the time I filed the room tax lawsuit, room tax doubled to 8%. And the amount spent on tourism promotion development dropped from 95% to 12%. There also was no steering committee or what is now referred to as a room tax commission. What had happened? Apparently the room tax collected had become a slush fund of sorts. Now I've heard numerous times from city officials 
The Sheboygan's expenditure room tax is what some other communities are using it for. I do not consider that a justification. As a child, if I told my parents I misbehaved because all the kids did it, I was still punished. There is no difference here. The state statute clearly defines what room tax is intended for, and to try to justify misusing it is just plain wrong. That is why in 1999, I started, I started lobbying for a room tax commission. The key component of the commission would be those of us in tour, lodging and tourism who make our living from tourism. We are the experts. We attend conventions, sit on state association boards, and keep a pulse on the latest tourism trends. The only reason I can think of that the city would not want a tourism commission overseeing the expenditure of room tax dollars is the city does not want to lose control of the money to use as it wants, clearly not for its intended purpose of tourism promotion and development. Let's be simplistic. Why, one, 30 seconds, please. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Please continue. Once Thank you. Carries. Let's be simplistic. Why are we collecting room tax at all when at the current rate it is estimated that only 15% of the room tax collected in 2005 will actually be used for marketing? Is it to fleece the pockets of overnight visitors to our city? Because that is what I feel is happening. There is a potential new legislation that would more clearly define the room tax statute. However, if the legislation is passed, Sheboygan would be exempt. I was told by the two state associations lobbying for the legislative changes that unless Sheboygan is exempt, it will not pass. They have been told that a local representative has the ear of the governor and would veto the legislation unless Sheboygan is exempt. To me, this makes Sheboygan looks like the poster child of a room tax nightmare statewide. I offered the settlement to end this nightmare. I filed the appeal because I have not seen any evidence that the city is willing to use room tax statute, room tax according to state statute unless forced by the courts. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Susan. Uh, next on the list is John Berner. I was doodling. <laughs> John, can I have your address, please? Yes, yeah, John Berner, 1919 Broadway, Sheboygan. John, you have five minutes. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, I don't even know what I was going to talk about. <coughs> Police station. I hope this thing gets settled soon. I've heard so much on it. Uh, WHBL took a, a survey on it, and people don't even care anymore. They're sick of it. The people that wanted 14th Street, it was voted in three times, now it's voted out. Uh, 23rd Street, I just, I think something central in the city. Centrally, when I mean population-wise, centrally, people call in the WHBL, said, hey, Center City, 23rd Street, look from the air. Police can't look from the air, they gotta travel on the ground. But I thought, you know, they're. There could be a solution very cheap. 15 police per shift, 15 metros set outside the city. All around, that's your station. Be cheap. Wouldn't take up much area, wouldn't have to buy. Have those little phones like you used to have on the telephone poles and on them. I mean, this is what this is getting to be a joke. It is, this, this, this police station, something so simple. I was a policeman, I, I, I just laugh. And another thing on, the, on this racial thing that the press um, had in there, and I'm not saying the person did it or didn't, I don't know, but Channel 4 carried it because I watched it that night. Channel 4 said, City of Sheboygan is one of the few police that don't have cameras in their vehicles. You know how simple that would have been, camera going as this was all taking place? Now you got three police officers, one person, one passenger. It would have been simple. The police are as good as the tools you give them to use. It's not like a library, and I love the library. Nothing against it, but people walk to the library. Criminals don't walk to the police station. You don't see a drug addict going to the police station, uh, can you tell me where I can buy this, what street? You don't. And I think our police are doing a wonderful job. I'm, I'm a friend of Joe DiCecco, I know the mayor knows him, you went to school, right, with him? 
And he's four attorneys short. All he wants is one, budget cuts. He works through the weekend. Because I'm dealing with him from a previous thing with the company that was here that went out of business for the last year and a half. We just kept, they go by priority. We just keep sitting on the bottom, I guess. But he's a very good person. Uh, and this dog situation, Mrs. Kittleson there, your, your grandkids were in the backyard and there was a dog out. And somebody had called the police. Police aren't equipped to handle this. They don't have any means of capturing a dog. And the little grand girl, their granddaughter there was running around and she wants to go to the dog. This dog just backed up and hunched over. Um, police aren't, aren't ha I mean, something has to be done. It's, it's not that many dogs, but when it does happen, it happens and the police aren't equipped. They're not. Uh, I don't think, I think something could be worked out with the Humane Society that if they're called, that the person that's getting called has to pay for it, plus a fine. I mean, somebody that's not there, you know, that's on call, that might be a solution. That he's not full payroll, but the person's who dog that is, you pay fifty, hundred dollars to have that dog taken in. And that goes plus your fine. Another thing is I, I haven't talked, I've been watching the Common Council and I've had people stop by my house and ask me why I, I haven't talked and I I said there's new blood in here and and they've got to get get working together and a lot of people feel this common council is very split and they see the older members some of the older members that are trying to work together with the newer members and the newer members are the ones now that are <coughs> Nope, it's true. It's not just me, it's a lot of people out there. A lot of people are watching you. You gotta work together. People that have been on the common council before, I know, fine's up. <laughs> I, okay, I get a couple extra seconds, right? You're gonna have to work together. You are, there's give and take. Thank you. Thank you, John. I got a scoot so I can hear the rest of this. I can't hear it. Uh, next on the list is Tom Gessler. Tom, Hi. can I have your address, please? 1711 South 12th Street. South 12th? Yes. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, good evening. I have several topics I'd like to talk about tonight. Uh, one is the tax season coming up right around the corner, okay? Uh, I own a house in Sheboygan here about 16 years, and my taxes went up, like everybody else's, about 120%. Meanwhile, wages went up about 45%, 40%. That seems to be a problem with me and a lot of other people. However, solution. Every problem, we've got to look for a solution. I came here a couple months ago, and I informed the entire council that there's money owed to this city. And I haven't heard a word why it's not being collected. Uh, I don't know if somebody's afraid to step on somebody's toes. We may have to do that. There's several million dollars owed to this city. It seems much easier to take $100 and throw it on everybody's tax bill. It's not the way to do it. You get the money that's owed to the city first. Uh, Milwaukee's doing it right now. They're owed $41 million. $28 million is traffic citations. They're going after this money. I don't know if it's garnishing the wages. I'd have to ask the city attorney later on. However, uh, some of them uh, are people you might know. Like I said, you're going to have to step on some toes. This money has to be paid back. One of them is a mayor of a suburb of Milwaukee who owes the city a quarter million dollars. You want the name, I'll give it to you later. I mean, come on, this is, this is money. This is the taxpayer's money. There's elderly taxpayers I talk to, they have to move out of the city, they can't afford it anymore. 
Okay, I would like to stay in this city, but we gotta start collecting some of this money. We might wanna start a committee. We have committees for everything else, about 30 of them. We might get a committee of two or three aldermen looking into uh, possibly setting something up with a collection agency. I'm guessing there's about four million owed right now that I know of. The next topic is the uh, wheel tax. Registered a vehicle last week and they said the wheel tax went back to $6. That's not much, I don't have a problem with that, but uh, I think it was originally designed for repairing the roads. I don't see a lot of road repair going on other than Michigan Avenue. I think we could do a little bit more road repair with that money. And I'm sure it's for tourism and other things, but uh, I think we could use that a little bit differently. The next thing is industry in a city. Over the last 20 years, just a few places that left, Heisen, Arway, Schreier Mall, Tannery, Optenburg, Leverin Shoe, Kingsbury. We're losing a lot of industry. We, what, we might wanna make a committee, three, four people, figure out how to attract industry to the city. It seems that a lot more are leaving and not many are coming. There's a reason that they're not building here. Now, I don't know if it's the storm runoff fees, I don't know if it's the taxes, that I don't know. However, I think we should get a committee together and study this and figure out why. Why when somebody's building, why are they building in uh, Oostburg? Why are they building in uh, Grafton, Sockville? Uh, down that way, they're building all over near Port Washington. Seems like not much is coming here. But I would like to thank the uh, companies that do believe in Sheboygan yet and are building here. That's great. We need you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, last on the list is Gina Steinhardt. <clears throat> Gina, can I get your home address, please? Sure. I can make this shorter. <laughs> 1311 Maryland Avenue, Chewagan. And we'll have five minutes. Okay. I'm here today replacing Dimple Adams who had to work tonight. She's a much better speaker than I am, but I'll do my best. Um, Dimple and I want to thank the po Sheboygan Police Department for all their efforts in our neighborhood as well as the rest of Sheboygan. It is good to see that there have been many drug-related arrests recently, and there has been much more police presence in the Sh Sheridan Park area. We both feel the police are now doing more than their share in helping the city and need the help of the Common Council now. The council has reviewed and studied the new police department's location and needs for years. Now that there are new members of the council, they need to catch up with the rest of us to learn what is needed and quickly. Silas Vanderweel has explained in his latest speaking column why the police department is needed and how the general public is at risk by using the current facilities here at City Hall. The police have come forward numerous times with statistics and expert opinions about how the um, Police department needs to be centrally located in order to best serve the city. Many of our citizens have also come forward to speak at meetings or write editorials to the papers sharing their own experiences and opinions about our city's needs. All of these people's time is valuable to them, I'm sure, and they all believe that the Common Council will take their opinions into account in making their decision. That is my hope also that the council will listen to the experts, the police, the citizens to make their decision to build the, cent the police station centrally and very soon. The longer this issue drags on, the chances of politics interfering become much greater. This, the needs of our city's police should be placed ahead of building relationships with the county. This, the shared service issue that many keep bringing up is basically a moot point. Our city police currently share more than 20 services with the county and have always been open to additional options. It seems to me that the only problem between the county and city now involves the 23rd Street land deal and how the city can solve the county's problems by buying that land. Whether you believe it or not, the Moyer Report acknowledges a contamination issue there and recommends that the county be responsible for the cleanup. Why are people denying this fact and creating so much confusion about this issue? If this location isn't the best choice, why isn't it eliminated entirely? That would stop wasting time discussing why it is or isn't the best location for the new police station and let the council move on to better options. The police station is going to be built for our police, 
So it's just common sense that their opinions and studies should be placed ahead of anyone else's. I started writing our alderman, my alderman in May of 2002 with problems such as traffic issues with Rockline, terrible road and sidewalk conditions, poorly managed rental properties, garbage strewn along our streets and into May Lane's property, as well as drug dealing and gang activity at Sheridan Park. I have gone house to house with petitions and without, getting neighbors' opinions about our area's needs. Some of the smaller issues have been resolved since then, but these bigger problems still exist to this day. Now our new mayor has promised to fix most of these problems without the need of placing the police department in Sheridan Park. I hope this can be done without too much cost to the taxpayers. I am looking forward to serving on this new committee he's mentioned creating for just this purpose. I also can't wait to see a new fence at Mayline, security cameras, and a shelter at the park, better lighting all around the neighborhood, and safer roads and sidewalks. It would also be great to see more companies besides Bemis donating money to help our neighborhood now that they have succeeded in saving Sheridan Park. I have been asked to be in charge of the Neighborhood Watch or Neighborhood Association program. I am happy to do so since I have tried to do this last year with very limited results. I have a very, very few close neighbors who are interested, but we need more support. If you are interested in helping in any way, please call me or email me at gina underscore steinhardt at yahoo.com. Thanks for your time and, considered, and continued commitment to positive change. Thank you. Tonight we have three here in schedule. One, amend the text of the zoning ordinance so as to repeal various subsections of the post-construction stormwater management zoning ordinance relating to application of certain performance standards. Two, <coughs> propose assessments for paving of White Fox Drive from Riverdale Avenue to Gray Fox Drive. Three, propose assessments for paving of South 17th Street from Washington Avenue to the Southerly Terminus. Is there anyone who would like to speak on any of this, these hearings? Is there anyone that would like to speak to any of these hearings? Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to thank um, Tom Holton and uh, ex-Mayor Schramm it's taken these people four years to get these roads into their neighborhoods and I am thoroughly grateful and I'm sure the people are in that area too that this is now beginning to happen. So which I one, thank Which one are you referring to, Alderman? I am referring to the, um, the White Fox Drive and, okay. and Gray Fox Drive and South 17th Street. Um, like I said, the people have waited for close to four years for these roads to be built and now it's in the process and um, I just need to bring that forward. Thank you. Thank you. Is, there, is there anyone else who would like to address council? Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the hearings be closed. There's a motion and a second that the hearings be closed. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda. ROs 151 through 525. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that on 51 through 525 that our, all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and that we pass all res resolutions and general ordinances. There's a motion to uh, accept and file all, all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and the attached resolutions be put upon their passage. So would you please call the roll? Deberg. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Groff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stepan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Bauman. Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions to be referred 526 to 536. 
Reports of Officers 2 to be referred 537 to 553. Resolutions introduced three by Alderman Groff, Stefan Davis, Montemeyer, and Susha requesting the, the mayor to submit a 2006 budget recommendation that maintains the general fund budget at a total level of appropriations of the 205 budget. Alderman Groff. And I would move for suspension. Pardon? I would move for suspension. There's a motion for suspension. Is there any objection? If not, please proceed. Um, then I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a second? Second. There's a motion and a second that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. F 555 lies over. 556 to 564 to be referred. To 564, I should say. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Honor. I move to suspend rules on 561. Discuss it now. You'd like to pull their pull 561 yes. out and make, make motion to spend the rules. Is there any objection? Hmm? Is there a second to spend the rules? Any objections? If not, please proceed, Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I'm going to um, bring a short amendment to my printed document, then I'll read this so that people know the full substance before we discuss it. In the, I apologize for this slight uh, amendment, but uh, I couldn't be in touch with the needed people prior to my leaving on vacation to be clear about an exact terminology. So the last, uh, the third to the last, be it further resolved, third from the bottom, simply add this phrase, please, at the end, uh, comma, and then these words, and will not be renewed in its present form, period. Are you making that a motion to that amend? That is uh, an, a motion for amendment. It's third to the last, be it further resolved, add these words with a comma, and will not be renewed in its present form. Alderman oh, Manny, we're just going to back up a little bit here. I, I need you to make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. We need a second, then you can yeah, amend. I move that the resolution put, on, put upon its passage. A second. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Okay. Now you can make the amendment. Now I move the amendment as uh, previously noted, and uh, you have the exact words, then, sir. Um, on the third, from the last paragraph, I have um, and will not be renewed in its present form. Is that Correct. Right? Period. Form. There's a motion to on the amendment, Alderman Graf. I'm just. Can you read the entire be it further resolved? Because is it, is it third from the bottom, including the two, two, the two on the second page, or is it just the, the first page? The first page. Oh, yeah. I, this sheet is two instead of one. I forgot. Okay. Be it further resolved that by June 30th, 2005, the mayor informed the Chamber of Commerce that the terms of the city's contracts with the chamber will quite possibly be, be modified in some form, comma, and will be not, not be renewed in its present form. And I'd be happy to speak to that if that is now clear. Okay, we've got another, Alderman Stefan. I had a couple questions, I guess. <clears throat> can, can we get a second to that amendment? I'll second it for the purposes. Okay, second. Oh, Mr. Stefan. I guess those two, last two sentences kind of, I want to make sure legally they're allowable because it, it seems to me that one says quite possibly we're going to modify it and the other one says we're not going to renew it like it is. So, I mean, the quite possibly will be modified is kind of useless if you're telling them it won't be renewed as is. I guess that's my first statement just on the, the wording of it. And then I wanted to just check with the city attorney. Does this constitute... I know for contractual reasons, by the end of June, we have to let the chamber know 
we have, we're going to rediscuss or reopen the contract or whatever. That does this accomplishes that if we put that in there? I believe it would, uh, Alderman Stefan, yes. Okay. And again, I believe uh, Alderman Manny's trying to address the fact that if we don't renew or do something with the contract before the end of the month, it out automatically rolls over. Correct. And exactly. that will give the council an opportunity to renegotiate the contract. Right. Any discussion on the amendment? There has been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, originally, this was scheduled to go to the Committee of the Whole, um, which we are meeting next week as a, as a Committee of the Whole. And I'm wondering, what is the urgency? Um, because if we meet next week as a Committee of the Whole and it's on there, we can do all this there and still get it back to Council by our, our June, um, whatever it's going to be, 20th, and, um, and then we can report out from there. And the other thing I, I'm kind of questioning is that normally what the chamber does is bring the, their proposed contract into the finance committee, and finance has usually been the, the committee that has been uh, working it out with them and discussing it with them and then sending it back to, to council for their approval. And I'm just bringing that up because uh, that's what normally has been done, but I know changes need to be made and so forth, and because of the fact that the date's coming up, but still going to the committee of the whole um, next week, um, I think would allow some of the aldermen to have more information and to get, um, to be able to talk to this um, much uh, more uh, intelligently than some of us can talk to uh, tonight. So um, that's my only question is, why aren't we doing this at the committee of the whole where it was originally scheduled? Alderman Manny, would you like to address that? Thank you. Uh, to address that question, I think it's uh, important to establish a special study committee as soon as possible. I think there's significant work to do. The timeline uh, is fairly short, not just the end of June, but it's proposed here by the end of September with a finished report. Therefore, the chamber can have three months of clarity in uh, their knowledge about what that new contract would, uh, would include. So I think we need to be expeditious and do this work and have the committee going as soon as possible. Uh, secondarily, about the amendment, um, recognizing Alderman Stephan's commentary and the, the ambiguity of the <coughs> extra phrase, I would amend my amendment to delete, quite possibly be modified in some form, and substitute and will not be renewed in its present form. Okay. Oh, well, I'm going to... Pardon me? I seconded the original amendment. So strike the one phrase and leave the phrase in that I previously added. Do we need to take a vote on that separately? Do we need to take a vote on that separately? Yeah. Sure. Sure. It's a friendly amendment. Okay. That, that adjustment will be treated as just a friendly change in the amendment. It'll stand under the original motion to amend and under the original second to amend. Alderman Berg. Well, we just heard the Chamber of Commerce uh, give, give their spiel tonight. I don't know why we want to have another special committee to study this or study that when they, and uh, try to push it through tonight, so I will not support this document. Okay. Maybe not. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I, when I read this in my agenda, I thought, oh, good for Alderman Manny. We're going to get some information put together. We're going to know what's going on. So we can quickly go ahead with this and let the chamber know where they stand. If it's a giant change, if it's a small change, if it's no change, we should find out as soon as we can. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Eberg. Yes, thank you, Aaron. If I understand correctly, what this would do is put a committee in place of the Finance Committee, uh, where this committee would develop parameters. The uh, Chamber is desirous of a longer-term contract. I think it's appropriate that we sit down with them and take a look at the longer-term nature of the contract uh, and uh, build that probably with a smaller group of people. Uh, and uh, if I understand correctly, this will then come as a report to the whole council uh, and then be likely referred to the Finance Committee for their deliberation. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, that's exactly correct. And I do want to say one thing very clearly, and that is this is not in any uh, measure an attack on the chamber. 
It's simply an attempt to get every party to the table. All that information together will give us much more wisdom and clarity and knowledge than the Finance Committee, for instance, could do on its own in the short term. I want to see lodging people together with chamber, with council, et cetera. Okay. Alderman Sedla. Thank you, um, Your Honor. I guess I, I'm missing something here. I guess um, why fix something if it's not broken? Um, we just identified that the chamber services the city very well. We have representation from the city, including an alderman on the CBV board. We also have um, Paulette Enders, who works with city planning and development. It's diversified. I have it here. There's many representation here through lodging, business. Um, and you know, what, what I found interesting, too, when speaking about the long-term effects of possibly creating a tourism commission, which this study would create and possibly look at. Um, when I looked at the packet that Alderman Susha had given us um, during her last presentation, there was a communication with herself and Mike Muth discussing who's going to actually be on that tourism commission board. And actually, um, Mr. Muth presents himself with the confirmation that um, Alderman Susha um, also agrees that that could be a possibility. I have some concerns here that, like I said, why are we creating another bureaucracy that what, what we have works right now, unless someone can give me a, um, a clear definition as to what, what's not, what are we missing here, because the chamber is doing a good job. Thank you. Alderman Stefan. I guess just as a point of order, right now we're just discussing that one little paragraph of change, or one little, just at the deletion of what will quite possibly be modified in some form and will not be renewed in its present form. So I, I think we should just get past that and then move to the whole document. Alderman Tsusha. Just a, a very quick comment in regards, um, thank you, Your Honor, uh, in regards to um, uh, the comments about if it's not broke, why fix it? Um, what's being left out of the total picture here is that last year, uh, based on another document that I received from Rich Gephardt, we generated $950,000 in room tax. But yet, if you look at the balance sheet on the page of the Sheboygan uh, uh, CVB that we received today, they're talking about room tax that they received of $289,000. So there is a big difference between $950,000 and $289,000. And that's why I would support putting together a task force to look at all of the room tax, not just a small segregated part. I think there's a lot more to the big picture that not all the aldermen understand as far as what's going on. Thank you. On the amendment, Alderman Vander will. I just wanted to say we need to stick to the amendment and not call the question on the amendment. Question has been called. Roll call. You know what you're voting on? Does everybody know? If you're voting on the amendment and the friendly addition to the amendment, the amendment was that on your first page, three paragraphs up, you're going to delete, will quite possibly be modified in some form and replace it with, and will not be renewed in its present form. That's what you're voting on, to change those words. OK, let me just, if I may, just to clarify a little bit further, if the council does not approve this, then at some point, it's going, the council may be, may have to vote to give notice to the, to the chamber anyway, because if, you, if the council does not, the contract automatically rolls over for a year. It doesn't do the, the chamber any good to have a contract for one year, and it doesn't do us any good. I think what Alderman Manny is trying to do, if I can gather my thoughts here following him, is just simply get the process going so that this thing does not roll over automatically, so that a task force has the, the, uh, the opportunity to look at it and then bring back recommendations to the council. We stay within the contractual terms. Recommendations come to the council. Then you can decide. That's all this, that's all this amendment is doing. OK, roll call. Would be change what I just stated. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand that now? Serta? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Davis? Aye. Drop? No. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Uh, the vote is 9 to 7. Amendment passes. Amendment passes. <coughs> Alderman Stephan, you had a quick comment on that? Uh, no, I'd actually like to offer another amendment. In the, in the hopes of creating some continuity, 
all the person Groff stated that's in, in the past this has been done by finance. Uh, I would propose to amend the fourth last paragraph on the first page where it says uh, two representatives from the Chamber of Commerce and three council members to just change that to three finance committee members. And that would create the continuity perhaps that we're looking for. I would second? so move. Is there a second? Second. There's an amendment to the motion that has been amended to change the three council members to reflect three finance committee members. Under discussion. <clears throat> Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my question is, would the people on finance have the time? I see this taking a whole lot of time this summer. And secondarily, do they have the interest? It's going to take a lot of listing and uh, a lot of work in, in bringing people together. And that's my only question. Well, Stefan, no, you're done? Sorry about that. Alderman Van Wheel. No? OK, any further discussion on the amendment? Roll call. Do you want to know what the amendment is? Sir, but. Are you all clear? You're voting, an I vote would be to change fourth paragraph up on the first page. <coughs> Last three words say three council members. This would change it to three finance committee members. An I vote would be to do that. Davis? Aye. Graff? No. Kittleson? No. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? No. Eberg? No. And Serta? No. Uh, the amendment fails 5 to 11. Okay. Next, we'll vote on the resolution as amended. Does anybody need that clarified? Alderman yeah, Grob. You need a motion to that effect. I think we have one on the floor, don't we, Steve? No. The original motion? Oh, no. As amended. The motion is amended. Would you like to make that, Alderman Grob? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who would? Oliver Manny. I move the amended resolution you put upon its passage. Is there a second? There's a second. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to actually offer another amendment just for clarification. One, two, three, four. On the fifth paragraph up from the bottom, um, we're therefore resolved that the mayor appoint nine members to form a special study committee. I'd like to insert consisting of city residents because I think this would help um, eliminate some of the problems in the past. Alderman Serta just mentioned um, Mr. Muth, who is not a city resident. She's right. People who don't live in the city shouldn't unnecessarily have to put their influence into this situation. So I would like to make that amendment. There is a motion to amend. Is there a second? There's a second. Under discussion, Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Can I discuss on the amendment portion of this? Please. Okay. Um, I think by amending it this way, we could leave out a critical component, and that would be um, representation from Blue Harbor, who necessarily, they, they put a lot into our room tax dollars, and by amending this to this, they would be left out of that. And they're a big component to this. Thank you. Any more discussion? Yes. yes. Um, Alderman Susha, could you tell me where you want it inserted, please? Um, after right after special study committee, and then tell me what you wanted to Consisting say. of city residents. Thank you. Okay, we'll vote on that amendment. That states consistent of city residents. Please call the roll. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Ron. Uh, I simply note, in my mind at least, uh, if we uh, go with resolution and limit this to city members. I don't think that limits input from others who live outside the city. This committee can and will search out everything and anything it needs to have as holistic an approach on as much information as possible. So I think this is very faithful to the spirit of uh, the intent that I bring. Any further discussion? 
Please call the roll. Do you know what you're voting on? Everybody clear? Uh, Groff? No. Kittleson? No. Manny? Yes. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bowman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Uh, the amendment fails six to ten. Okay. So then we will vote on the motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Alderman Stefan. Um, just, I'd like the city attorney to tell us if we vote this down tonight. I know some of the older persons had a question of fast tracking it. Let's say, does it come back automatically, or does it have to be brought back in? If, if the document's voted down. Right. If they vote no on this vote, it doesn't come back automatically. No. Somebody's got to bring it in and start the process all over. Please call the roll. Alderman McGraw. But great. Um, I'll, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Steve, but wouldn't it then fall back to going to the Committee of the Whole as it was originally brought in to go to the Committee of the Whole? Unless the motion, or we could make a motion to send it to the Committee of the Whole after it was voted down. Couldn't we? Well, the, uh, the rules were suspended, you know, to, uh, to act on the document tonight. I guess if you don't act on if you vote the document down, I think it, it's... It's gone. Thank you. Just want to say with all the amendments and everything here, it's important that we put this thing through at least. If the chamber is looking for a long-term agreement, then we owe it to the people of this community to take a look at that long-term agreement that they're looking for. And if we don't, we'll be coming back next year and saying, okay, we've got another one-year contract coming up. Do we want to do that or do we want to look at a long-term agreement? We should just put this thing to bed to, you know, tonight, get it going, get everything answered, and take it from there. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to say I agree with Alderman Radke. I think we've had a lot of instances in the city where we need to look at what's going on and we have a lawsuit right now, and I think it is in the best interest to pass this tonight. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I think there needs to be some clarification, and maybe Alderman Groff can help, this, help us out. There seems to be, we've gotten the impression that if we don't create this committee, that this contract isn't going to be renewed, that these contracts in the past, I don't know how they ever got renewed. I think we do have a practice in place here that the aldermen all have input on their discretion. Um, and maybe Alderman Groff can highlight some of the things that take place with this contract process that does take place in finance. Thank you. Alderman Groff, would you like to highlight that? I will try. Um, basically, um, the last time we had this contract was five years ago, I think. And uh, what happened at that particular time is that the chamber came in, presented uh, a contract to the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee discussed it and asked questions regarding it and so forth. We brought it back to the, um, to, it could have been brought back to the council asking for a special committee, the whole meeting, where the chamber came and discussed um, exactly what um, their contract all had in it. And um, we voted on it after that. So um, I don't know, Rich, is there anything else that we have to do? Um, other than that, okay. Alderman D. Berg. <clears throat> like Alderman Groff said, the uh, chamber brings it in, talks to the finance. They, e either you can have a committee to hold meeting, and then they bring it to the, I don't see why we have to keep on hiring or getting all these committees together. They're, you're taking, you're taking uh, the power away from the council. We're the ones that, uh, are supposed to control things. And here, every, every time something comes up, they want to have a study committee, a study committee. I, I'm just going to vote no on this document once and for all. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. My last suggestion would be maybe what we can do, seeing that this is um, important to us all, is to have a committee of the whole. 
on this once this contract has been explored so we can have some good discussion on it. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I can't imagine objecting to gathering information from people who know what they're doing. And that's what we want to try to do tonight. Thank you. Alderman Eberg. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I think we're pleased to have the chamber represented this evening. So I'd like to move to open the floor to any chamber member if, if they would wish to uh, add their input into this particular uh, uh, resolution. There's a motion and a second to open the floor. Do you have a ch chamber member in mind? Uh, perhaps uh, Ms. Olson, if she wishes to speak. To open the floor to Ms. D. Olson. Oh, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Olson. First of all, I didn't think getting a contract would be so difficult. <laughs> We've had one multiple times and uh, haven't gone through quite this. Um, as you know, the Chamber wants to see a long-term contract. We want to be your continued provider for the service of the tourism industry. Um, I think I shared at the Committee of Whole the state statute as it relates to the need to contract with a tourism entity. We are that entity. Um, whichever way you choose to sit down and address that with us, we will be open to doing that because we need to work in partnership with the city. Um, but I don't think we need to make it difficult to get to a result in getting a contract. Um, so if you want to do the study committee, we'd be open to sitting down uh, and working with you on developing a contract. Uh, I think there's some other legalities that have to be addressed if you decide you want to go with the tourism commission. And uh, I think uh, the old, or, um, City Attorney Stephen Clean should be a part of that study committee because the state statute clearly defines a number of things as it relates to um, developing a tourism commission and some components of doing that. So. Are there any questions you have of me? Paul McGraw. Yeah, the, um, are you prepared within the next week to, um, to present your contract to the your proposal to the city as far as the contract you're looking for um we could certainly be prepared yes <laughs> if you would like us to do that and as you did in the past pre presented to like the finance committee and then have them present it to the council and have you come and present it to the council also after the recommendation or something we would be happy to do that in the same fashion that we have done if that is your choosing thank you thank you thank you Ms. Olson Okay, we have a motion as amended, right? Does everybody know what the motion is? The motion is the resolution as amended. The only amendment you made was on the third paragraph up, up where it says deleting out will quite possibly be modified in some form. It will now say and will not be renewed in its present form. That's the only one that passed. Otherwise, the rest of the resolution stands as is. An I vote would be with that one change. And Kirk, so, thank you. Uh, so what you are saying is that we are voting on this whole resolution now. now we have the whole resolution so that I is to accept, the no is to, to. With the amendment I just read. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Please call the roll. Hiddleston. I'm not sure that I have enough information here right now to, to, to give a, a, a vote that. Wait. Okay. Uh, that is acceptable. I'm going to say no. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? No. Groff? No. The motion lost 6 to 10. Okay, moving along. Report of committees 6, 565. By public protection and safety recommended filing documents submitted a communication from Donna. 
Sweden, Sweden of the Skybox Sports Pub and Grill requesting permission to close St. Clair Avenue from North 8th Street to North 9th Street from August 11th, 14th. 11th through the 14th for their second annual street fest and granting permission. Hold on. Uh, hold on, I need to call on Alman Susha. Make a motion. And move to accept and adopt the report of the committee. Second. Motion to accept and adopt report of committee. Alderman Meyer, under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to say I am part of this committee and um, the information we were giving, given during the meeting was very stellar. It was a good for everybody that this festivity happened and they want to do it again this year. But since then, I've learned a lot of information about the neighbors of the Skybox and last year it was not as wonderful as we were told. The, a lot of the neighbors had complaints about noise, people urinating on their property, and I think We've been, we need to look back at this. Thank you. Paul McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I also received several calls regarding this particular issue. At this time, I'd like to re refer it to um, public protection and safety. Second. There's a motion to re refer a report of committee 565 back to public protection and safety. And there's a second under discussion. A roll call on it. Under discussion, Alderman Van Akron. Yeah, I have a, one question for an attorney. Is this, now are we calling this a block party or a fair? Because if it's a block party, every person on that block has to agree to have this. So how is this uh, named? Is it a block party or a fest party or whatever? They call it. Um, yeah, I'm not specifically familiar with their request, but I don't believe it's a block party under the ordinance. Uh, I think they asked for permission to hold a street festival of some sort. Um, you know, the, we do have a block party ordinance that talks about contacting the, uh, the other neighbors on the street. And, you know, I think any time you close a street, it's probably best to have input from the, the neighbors. And I think that's what Alderman Meyer was talking about and uh, Alderman Groff that you're in concerns from the other neighbor, so the proper thing to do, I think, is to refer it back to the committee, invite those people in, and see, uh, see if they can get some consensus as to what they want to do. And you've got, obviously, this is uh, August 11th through the 14th, so it's not this weekend or anything like that. You've got some time to address those concerns. Alderman Segali. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I thought that this was held last year just and we gave permission just because of the PGA was in town and that they wanted to have something like this during the PGA event. I didn't realize that they were going to request it every year from now on. So if we could have some discussion that, on that too from public protection and safety, I think that's necessary. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. If um, just for the Public Protection and Safety Committee, when the, if this is sent back to them, uh, the owner of the, uh, the apartment complex and the building next door to the apartment com complex that is right next to Skybox should be invited in also because he has, um, he has um, information from his tenants as to what happened during this last year, and, and he's one of the people that I talked to. So, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just as a point of clarification, um, it is a block party permit that they are applying for, and um, Mr. Fox was unable to attend, but we did have photos and a letter uh, with his statements that uh, we did review. Uh, the vote on this was uh, three in favor of moving ahead and one opposed, and um, it sounds like some of the committee members have already uh, started reconsidering. Thank you. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I was one of those that voted for it in committee, and I have changed my mind after talking to various people to a no vote on the floor here tonight. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I, too, received a call, said, how did the vote go? And when I relayed the information, the, the neighbor was not happy and talked to me a lot about his experiences of what happened last year. So I also am going to vote against this. 
here on the council floor or if it comes back to public protection and safety and we get more input from the neighbors. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to remind council that the motion was to send it back to committee so we can have this discussion in committee. And right now we're just banging our heads against the wall. So thank you. Alderman Susha. Maybe it's a point of order. Can we call the question? We're getting ready to do it. Thank you. Okay, there's a motion and a second on the floor to re refer back uh, 565 to uh, Public Protection and Safety Committee. Please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Uh, Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Deber, Aye. Eber, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion passes. 566, by public protection and safety, recommend in filing documents submitting a communication from the Lake Fest Steering Committee requesting keeping DeLand Park open until midnight on August 19th and 20th and asking permission to sell beer until 11 p.m and the committee recommends approving music ending at 10.30 p.m., beer sales ending at 10.45 p.m., and the park closing at midnight. <coughs> Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the report of committee. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt report of committee under discussion. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. As long as we're doing 566, 567 is exactly the same wording. It's coming out of Public, uh, public Works. I'd like to uh, just move that that one also be accepted and adopted. Okay, motion to accept and adopt 566 and 567 together. And second, any discussion on that? Not. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 568, by public protection and safety, recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the JCs requesting review and approval of operating hours for the event held in Kiwanis Park from August 4th through the 6th and the committee approving the request. Alderman Susha. Okay, um, I'd like to also take 569 with it. It's the same document coming from Public Works. And I'd like to move to accept and adopt the reports of committees. There's a motion to accept and adopt 568 and 569. There's a second under discussion. Alderman Bauman, I'm sorry, you, you, didn't, no. you, didn't, you didn't want to talk. Alderman Kraft. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I was just wondering if the, the chairperson of either committee could tell us what are the, um, the new hours and so forth and, and what um, request are we granting? We've got uh, Alderman Bauman would like to address it. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Exactly the same as the uh, request from the uh, uh, Larry Salmon of Lake Fest, uh, with the uh, uh, music to end at 10:30, beer sales at 10:45, and closing the park at midnight. Alderman Susha. Um, with the exception of the Thursday night festivities at Kiwanis Park, they will end a little bit earlier than that. <laughs> Okay, there's a motion to accept and adopt 568 and 569 together. Any further discussion? Not, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 570, by the committee of the whole recommended filing documents submitting a communication from Susan Hundley requesting that the Common Council consider in closed session the settlement offer that was submitted on October 18th, 04 regarding the room tax litigation. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted, which means we accept and adopt the report. There's no action because the action was to file it. Thank you. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt 570 under discussion. Not. All those in favor state aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Motion. Any opposed? Motion carries. 571, by the committee, committee of the whole recommending filing resolution 2905-06 by Alderman Manny relating to the city contract with the Chamber of Commerce regarding relating to tourism promotion. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that um, 
that the resolution by Alderman Manning relating to a city contract with the Chamber of Commerce relating to tourism promotion recommend that the resolution be I move that the resolution be placed on file. 571, five, five, that the um, motion to accept and adopt a, a report of committee. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion? Not all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion, motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, lies over 572 and 573 to be referred, 574 through 576. Matters laid over, 440, we will hold for 460. 441, an RO, uh, RO number 390506 by City Plan Commission recommending repealing subsections of the post-construction stormwater management zoning ordinance relating to the application of certain performance standards. Who wants to take that one? All my Monte Mayor. Thank you. I move that we. Okay, what are the words for the report of. Accept and file the you. RO. Accept, accept and file the RO. And did the ordinance be passed? And yes, that the please. ordinance be passed. And the ordinance be passed. There's a motion to accept and file RO. And that the ordinance be passed. There's a second under discussion. Not all those in favor, state aye. Aye. You need a roll call? Okay, <coughs> take that back, gentlemen and ladies. We'll take a roll call. Sue? Please. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Ballman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hiddleston? Aye. And Manning? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. 458, resolution number 240506 by Alderman Stefan Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in 205 budget. Alderman Stefan. Your Honor, if I could, I'd like to take 459 also. Please do. I would move that both resolutions, 240506 and 250506, be put upon their passage. There's a motion and a second that uh, 458, 459 be put upon their passage. Uh, just for information, 458 is uh, some transfers from cat licenses to the cat pounding service. It's also the transfer of the $8,000 contribution to the park department being put in an account for exercise equipment, as was explained at the last committee meeting, or council meeting. And 459 is just transferring money from uh, building inspection for house numbers in the trailer park. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All my staff. Any other discussion? If not, would you please call the roll? Montemayor? Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Ballman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manning. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. 460. Need a motion uh, to put the resolution upon this passage. Resolution number 2605. 06 by Alderman Stefan Montemayor and Davis authorizing entry into a contract for obtaining financial consulting services and we will take 440 along with that. Alderman Stefan. I uh, move the resolution and a report of committee be adopted. There's a motion to, uh, to put resolution number 260506 upon its passage and accept and, and accept and file the RO and pass the resolution attached. There's a second under discussion. Please call the roll. Radke. I'm sorry. Mr. Say, thank you. Your Honor, if you could just please explain what entering into contract, obtaining financial consulting services is all about, please. Over Stefan. I'll give you the very, very brief, and if you want anything more, Rich is willing and able to. Uh, this is basically our bonding provider who looks out there at the future and advises us on when we're looking for municipal bonds and borrowing and provides those services to us. Actually, I don't think in the next year we're really going to need it, but we needed a contract to extend that far. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Any other questions? If not, please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. 
Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 466, General Ordinance Number 50506 by Alderman Meyer and Montemayor creating the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners as Division 11 of Article 5, Chapter 2 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the General Ordinance be put upon his passage. Second. There's a motion to second. General Ordinance be put upon his passage under discussion. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I think on the second page, Section 2. Dash 765A explains a lot. The Board of the Park and Forestry Commissioner shall have the following duties and authorities. Be responsible for providing advice and counsel on all aspects of development, maintenance, preservation objectives and policies of the parks, park facilities, parkways, boulevards, forestry program, and such other public areas under the jurisdiction of the Park Department located within or without the corporate limits of the city like the new one we just got, um, and secure the quiet, orderly, and suitable use and enjoyment thereof by the people. The board shall submit rules and regulations that require legislations that will promote those purposes to the Public Works Committee of the Common Council and to the good of all of us. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Berg. Here we go again, another committee. We got the Department of Public Works, we got uh, Paul Meyer, head of the park system, all very experienced people. Now we want to start another committee. I will not support this document. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this board was already enacted years ago, and it was dissolved in April 2001 when Mayor Schramm was in office. And the, one of the purposes of this board is to protect our parks. And with the dissolving of this board, it kind of led the way for what happened with Sheridan Park because the park was put in the hands of people that didn't understand or respect our parks. And I think this board, the Park and Forestry Board, needs to be reinstated. We don't need to repeat what we just did. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it's true that many uh, aspects of uh, the work that this commission would do uh, are aspects of work that Public Works already does. But there are extra things and additional things that would be potentially exciting and really positive long term. They could include uh, capital fund raising, uh, thus purchasing of other park lands. It could include volunteer programs of sorts that I don't quite envision, but when people get together, good things happen. So. I think it has much more potential than might uh, appear for some people on the surface. Thank you, Alderman Mitty. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would question um, Alderman uh, Meyer if they've explored the idea of putting Sheridan Park at the top of their list to see if you know some of the, the action plan that was discussed at the last meeting, if, if that entity would also work on safeguarding that park particularly. Thank you. Solomon Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, the, the group proposed that would make up this, this committee commission would be the chairman of public works, city superintendent of parks, that makes good sense, Paul Meyer, somebody from the Sheboygan Plan Commission, the, the long range lookers, re representative of the Sheboygan Area School District. The schools could help us also. The City Directory of Public Works and Engineering, of course, we need his brains in there. Somebody from the Police Department and somebody from the Historic Preservation Commission. All sorts of information coming together for one purpose. Let's get lots of input by people who know what they're doing and know what they're talking about to give us more information so we make better decisions. Thank you. Alderman Bowman. Hi. I thank you, Your Honor. Um, if I could, I'd like to first make an amendment to this on page two. In the section seven, or two seven six four, under letter B, 
where it states one member of the board shall be the chairperson of the Public Works Committee of the Common Council. I'd like to add the words or his designee. And this would be just in case the chairperson could not make that particular meeting that someone could be there in that person's place. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to amend. Section D. Letter B. B, letter B. To state one member of the board shall be the chairman of the Public Works Committee of the Common Council or his or her designee, correct? There's a motion to amend. Any discussion on the amendment? Not, please call the roll. We'll wait on uh, City Clerk Sir Richards. She's working really hard tonight. Uh, Stefan, this is the amendment we're voting on. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vander, I'm sorry, Van Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. No. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Bra. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Sigali? Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Amendment passes. Now we'll take a vote on the, on the motion as amended. Take call roll, and we'll wait for Sue. Did we get a motion as amended? There was, there was one on the floor. Oh, wait a minute. The, uh, Alderman Bauman? Your Honor, I'd move that the general ordinance be passed as amended. There's a motion and a second to pass the resolution as amended. Oh, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Bradkey? Aye. Sigali? No. <coughs> Stefan? Aye. 14 eyes, two notes. Motion passes. Alderman Stefan? Uh, Your Honor, I don't know if this is out of order. If it is, you could certainly tell me I am. Um, since we've now created a Parks Commission, could we go back and take document 559 and do a dual referral on that to also go to the Parks Commission? I'm sorry, what now? 559, the communication from Eldenburg regarding pet friendly areas. We're referring that to Public Works, and I guess I would just ask, it would make sense now if we would also refer it to the new, newly created Parks Commission. 559? 559 for this evening, 559. correct? 559. That way that commission has some work to do. <laughs> do we need a motion to do that, or? I would uh, so move. I what is your motion, Alderman Stefan? That document 559 be sent to both Public Works and the Parks Commission. Okay. There's a motion and a second to refer uh, 559 of Public Works and to the Board of Parks and Forestry Commission. There's a second under discussion. You want to roll call on that? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion. Aye. Motion passes. <laughs> 466 General Ordinance 60506 by Alderman Susha, Vanderweel, Montemayor, Ratke, and Meyer relating to the no parking at any time period so as to delete the south side of Kentucky Avenue from the east curb line of South 11th Street to a point 73 feet west thereof. Alderman Susha. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. General ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Sigali. Thank you. If someone could please um, just explain why this, this is taking place. Why you want the no parking in any time periods during this, in this area. Alderman Susha. Um, please, please rise. Yeah. Answer. Um, it's going to be deleting this on the south side of Kentucky Avenue from the east curb line of South 11th Street and then 73 feet west. That's a good question. Um, 
If I could have a minute to look at my documents, sure. I will. Sure. Well, Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honors. I recall in committee, Sergeant Tarkowski mentioned something about they redid some curb work down there, so they didn't need all that any longer, so they removed the restrictions down there. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stepan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law? By law 577 and RO by the city clerk granting various licenses. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file the RO. There's a motion, second. Under discussion. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 578 will go to finance. 579 lies over. 580 will go to finance. 581 will be referred to public protection and safety. Sorry. Alderman McGrath, did you want to speak, sir? Yes, Your Honor. On 578, according to the agenda, it's supposed to go to um, the Mayor's International Committee. That, that, is, that is correct, Alderman McGrath, but uh, there was a recommendation made, I believe, by Alderman Bauman to refer that to finance instead of the Mayor's International oh, Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 581 will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 582, Special Committee on Risk Management. 583, Redevelopment Authority. Other matters? 584 is a report of officer by the City Clerk Committee on Communications from Richard Meyer, manager of the Harvard Center bid regarding concerns with the water feature next to the library. And then we'll go to finance. 585 is an RO submitting an amended summons and complaint in the matter of Bank of America versus Robert Rigolot and Ann Rigolot in the city of Sheboygan et al. That will be referred to risk management. 586 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to pay the required environmental fees enforced by the Wisconsin DNR for the wastewater treatment plant. That will be referred to public works. 587 is a resolution to establish a joint planning process for shared law enforcement services. It will be referred to City County Shared Services Committee. 588 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting the final plat of Green Meadows located in the town of Sheboygan on behalf of the owners Green Meadows Real Estate LLC. That will be referred to City Plan Commission. 589 is a resolution approving the final plat of Green Meadows subdivision. And that will be referred to City Plan Commission also. 590 is an RO submitting a communication from Dale Dorr, Wastewater Treatment Plant Superintendent, regarding the methane gas to energy cogeneration project. That will go to Public Works. 591 is a resolution to authorize entering into agreement with Alliant Energy for the installation of the microturbine cogeneration facility and Unison Solutions for the installation of the heat recovery system for the microturbine cogeneration facility. And that will be referred to Public Works. 592 is an RO submitting a communication from Michael Warner stating that each mayor has left the mark of their administration on Sheboygan and a mayor's legacy is marked by what they accomplished for the current and future needs of the city. And that will be referred to Committee of the Whole. Motion, second to adjourn. All those in favor state aye. aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs>